really good everybody hope you're doing well out there today we're talking about ccp one of my favorite avant-garde brands i used to be heavy into ccp and like paul harden elena dawson deep d that kind of like deep end of the avant-garde scene right and now recently i transitioned more into the, like the tech world sphere reason for that is because i'm old and i like it comfortable right i'm just <laughs> i'm kidding nah, actually that's true i'm really old and like my body like everything hurts and <sighs> You know, like wearing shoes like that can be kind of difficult for my body as well. So I prefer like just sneakers that keep my feet dry when it rains out there, but they still are comfortable. So yeah, basically the reason is that I'm old, but I still love the handmade artisanal side of the avant-garde scene, right? So what my goal is with this channel here, right? I'm trying to find like a middle ground between avant-garde artisanal brands and also like techwear brands. And I'm trying to like, somehow make it work in my outfits right to combine both and i know like the avant-garde people they're really like loyal to the brands right so they probably like all the ccp heads out there will probably hate me on the other side you have the tech world people who are really passionate about their brands right like the acronyms and, and all that so so probably both sides will hate me but i'm cool with that that's my personal style right and my personal opinion is also like that's i don't want to subscribe to a label right I'm not, I don't want to be like the tech work guy or the avant-garde guy, right? I have my own style and um, my style is to combine both. So I'm trying to wear like artisanal stuff. Like this is an MA cross shirt that I just got from a friend of mine, right? So I'm trying to combine those with like a sneaker from Boris, for example, right? Boris and Salomon or whatever. And looking at like the typical tech wear silhouette, right? It's so, it's an awesome silhouette, right? But everybody looks the same in my opinion, right? So you have like cargo pants, like they're, with a drop crotch, heavily tapered, usually a technical fabric. Then sneakers, you probably have like an acronym presto or whatever. Then you have a technical outerwear jacket, probably an acronym as well. Something with a high neck covering half of your face. And that's a cool aesthetic, but I don't wanna look like everybody else out there. I have my own style, right? And that's like, I'm trying to explore that middle ground between techwear and avant-garde with this channel. And I hope you come with me on this journey. Anyway, so yeah, I used to be deep into CCP. I used to have a lot of CCP stuff. I sold most of my items. Uh, I still have a couple of them, which we can look at if you want to. I know this is not gonna be everybody's style. I think everybody respects Carol Christian Paul out there, right? All right, so let's talk about CCP. So first of all, CCP stands for Carol Christian Pell right? Let's get the pronunciation right first, right? It's Pell, it's not Powell, it's not Powell or whatever. Carol Christian Pell was born in Linz in Austria, which is like not far from here, from Munich, Germany, where I live, right? And I know the pronunciation. And the OE is basically another version of Ö, right? Which is a German letter. And it's pronounced Pell, right? So Carol Christian Pell. Yeah, and like CCP, he has been around for a very long time. He's always done his weird little niche stuff. I think the early pieces were kind of crazy, but not too successful until he had like, he has a studio in Milan, by the way. I think like the first event where like real people really started talking about CCP was like, I don't know what season it was. The crazy fashion show, like he invited like reporters and the press and all that, like lots of people to the river. And like all the reporters, everybody was were like waiting for like the fashion show, right? And then he had like fake corpses in the river, right? With his clothes on. It was awesome. And that was like kind of, I think like the first event, like where people really started talking about him. And yeah, since then everybody respects him, right? His stuff is, insanely well made i know a couple of like shoemakers and if you show them a piece like this they really really appreciate the construction and the craftsmanship that goes into those they know like his leather is the best you can have the best you can buy so yeah not everybody's cup of tea right but absolutely everybody respects him for good reason carol christian Pell really has become famous for like his leather treatments i'm not sure if you can see it here on camera but he can create like those crazy textures out of leather, right? And this is because he has like an extreme experimental approach, right? He experiments a lot. Like this, for example, is culata, right? Which is horse butt. And 
This texture is basically achieved by washing the culata right on hot, on hot temperature. He also basically invented object dyeing, right? Object dyeing is basically the dyeing of the shoe in this example after it's fully done, right? So you, he cuts the leather, then fully constructs the shoe, sews everything together, and then puts the finished shoe in a barrel filled with dye, and then he dyes the finished shoe basically, right? Lots of other designers do that as well, but he basically invented it, right? So maybe let's look at packaging. So those are the rice bags. This is the usual packaging for CCP. Right, they have a zipper here. That's like a typical tag. Let's look at some of the products now. So this is a sneaker, right? Made out of kangaroo leather. And it's, this is called the drip sneaker. That is a pretty heavy color. <laughs> I absolutely love it. This is the red one, obviously. And yeah, so it's basically constructed out of kangaroo leather, right? It's super comfortable. And then it's dipped in this liquid rubber, right? And then it, when it dries the rubber, it has kind of like the drips down there. And they wear off, right, over time. It feels really weird walking in them when you have them brand new. But then over time, like they become like regular sneakers, right? Which is awesome. And that's kind of what I meant earlier, right? So if you look at tech wear stuff, right? You have like super comfortable stuff that basically supports your being, that supports your comfortable living, I guess. And this is the exact opposite, right? So you walk like a weirdo with the drips and that's the opposite to tech wear in my opinion. But then from a technical perspective, right? The construction, etc., is done at least as well as on the tech wear end. So that's really a philosophical topic, which I would really love to discuss in the comments if you want to. But yeah, this is the drip sneaker. I absolutely love this one. I had this one in black and in gray before, color 33, which is like a gray, greenish type of color. And then on the other hand, you have a boot. This is called the tornado zip boot, which has basically a two-way zipper here. So if you have like fat feet, you can <laughs> open it up from from the bottom here and this is a surprisingly comfortable shoe ccp has the best insoles leather insoles they're super comfortable but yeah so this is the culata version right so obviously he does work with like kangaroo leather he has like cow leather um, different types of horse leathers different types of cow leathers and then i brought i borrowed a piece from a friend i used to have this jacket but i sold it because it's just not wearable to me right so this is the prosthetic high neck jacket made out of the most beautiful horse leather you can find. It's so juicy. It smells ultra weird. <laughs> but yeah, as you can see here, it has like metal prosthetic parts on the elbow, right? Like an articulated elbow. And then if you look at the sleeve, it has like those half gloves with metal parts here at the knuckles as well. All the knuckles even on the thumb here, cool detail. And then on the inside you have a zip here, right, where you can zip it open to get your hands out if you need to use your phone or try not to look like a weirdo. And then you can get out here and like work on your smartphone, shake hands. And yeah, the thing about like the object dying, especially with the jackets and the vest bag is it color, like if you wear something white underneath, right? Chances are that your shirt is gonna be black or have some stain, has some stains at least. I love the high neck though. I think it's an awesome cut. And the leather quality is not matched, unmatchable. Yeah, when I bought this jacket, to me, it was more like an art piece, right? Rather than a functional piece of clothing. So my goal was actually to like, just keep it in my closet and then maybe one day hang it up somewhere in my apartment. But yeah, I never got, got around to doing that. So I sold it, which I kind of regret because this is one of the monumental pieces of Carl Christian Paul, in my opinion. And it's an important jacket, right? It's an important CCP jacket, in my opinion. Right, next up I have a pair of derbies also made from horse leather and the construction of these like is superb if you go to a cobbler to get a vibram sole on or whatever like he will immediately say okay this is a well-made pair of shoes it happened to me a couple of times like i had so many ccp shoes in the, in the past i don't know i had like six or seven different boots different cuts different leather different colors 
had a couple of different uh, derbies as well. Like there's the folded one, which I absolutely love. And this one is like the standard. And this is a pair like you will, you'll buy one and they'll hold up forever, right? And one of the weird things, like one of the cool things in my opinion is when you buy them, like if you go to Le Carreur or Darklands or whatever, like any shop that stocks CCP, right? This is what they look like brand new, right? They look like they've been worn for two years, which is awesome in my opinion, right? And you really see like the construction. If you look at the construction of the sole here, you see like every layer of leather here that's part of the heel. So the process is really appreciated, right? When you look at those items, you see, right? You see how how those are made, which is so awesome in my opinion. And that's the exact opposite of tech wear, right? Where everything is like hidden and you have like, the zipper is covered and everything is made by machines, right? And I recently did a post on Instagram saying, it, asking if artisanal tech wear is an oxymoron, right? And that's such an interesting topic because to me, you have artisanal stuff, right? Artisanal brands where you can really see that stuff is handmade. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you have like the tech wear brands where it's obvious that it's made by a machine, right? And I'm really trying to like combine those two worlds with my personal style. I know that I'm not there yet, but hopefully I'll be there soon. Anyway, Derby, awesome pair as well. Yeah, the drip sneaker is, a really comfortable shoe that looks good in my opinion. It looks like it's obviously a sneaker, but it looks like it's well made and it is well made. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera here, but the patina on the red leather is amazing. It ages beautifully. Kangaroo is such an amazing leather, right? It's ultra thin. So this is a double layer that is used here. I've worked with kangaroo leather in the past and it's ultra, ultra strong. Like it's, a, I think it's the strongest leather that exists, right? But it's ultra thin. So it's pretty cool for bags and shoes and clothing and stuff. Kangaroo leather is really expensive, right? Uh, but I mean, those shoes are pretty expensive as well, so. Even if you look at the laces, you can see that it's handmade, right? Yeah, love the drip sneaker. This boot to me is the perfect pair of boots. I will never sell those. The leather is perfect. Culata, it looks different from every side. It has kind of a suede on top, and then it kind of becomes like a sh more shiny leather on the outside. And then you have like those scars on the inside. So beautiful. And I feel like a badass wearing those, right? You feel like a cowboy or whatever. One thing is though, you need to put Vibram soles on them because you'll mess up the leather. Well, I guess it depends on where you live, right? I think if you live like in LA or in a city or a country where it doesn't snow, that should be fine. But here in Munich, it snows a lot in winter. And then they put like those little stones out, like the salt and stones, uh, so that you don't slip outside, right? And they can absolutely ruin leather soles. So you definitely should put Vibrams on them. Right, so CCP is usually known for the leather pieces. And to be honest, I only had leather pieces from CCP as well. I had like a couple of leather jackets, right? I had the high neck, different colors. I had the vest bag, which is kind of a unique piece as well. And probably one of the signature pieces from CCP, right? There's like the regular vest bag in black leather, which is the one I had. Then there's a pretty rare version of this, which is like the fabric version, right? Then there's a long vest bag. Then there's a vest bag with like a raincoat underneath and stuff like that. So I've only had the leather pieces, but I highly respect what he does with garments as well, right? The construction, the pattern, like everything is best in class, absolutely. 
Um, from what I've heard, like the fabrics are pretty delicate, right? So you really have to be careful not to rip it, not to break it. And again, that's also the exact opposite of techwear, right? Which is meant to be durable and used and abused, right? And that's like, it's such an interesting topic too. I'm sorry that I'm trying to like, that I'm going back to that topic all the time, but it's so interesting to me, right? It's so philosophical, like on the one hand, you have like those highly functioning garments, right? They're like meant to protect you as a person. And then on the avant-garde side, you have, when I was wearing those avant-garde pieces, it felt more like I had to protect the pieces that I wear because they were so expensive and I didn't want to like ruin them, right? <laughs> if you wear like a 2000 euro shoe, right? You are freaking careful out there not to scratch it, not to like destroy it or whatever. So let's say it rains outside, right? You're wearing a leather jacket, it costs like four grand. You'll definitely protect it, right? But then on the other hand, if you have like an acronym jacket, it also costs like 4K. I'm not sure if there is an acronym jacket that costs 4K. Anyway, it will protect you, right? So that's, I'm not saying one is better than the other, right? On the avant-garde side, you have more like the art. You can see that stuff is handmade, right? This is the personal touch. And this is definitely one of the things I'm missing from the tech world side, right? That you can see that the that people put the heart and soul into the products, right? And you can definitely tell on the avant-garde side. Anyway, guys, I'm rambling here. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was definitely not an in-depth review of Carol Christian Pell. Please say Pell, not Powell or Powell. And it was definitely not a deep review of like the products that we see that we see today. I just wanted to give you like a bit of background, like where I'm coming from in, in terms of like fashion and stuff and where I'm trying to move with this channel. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that old like button down below. Also, subscribe to the channel. I'm releasing new videos every week. I'm just getting started. And yeah, I guess I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Instagram at David Mozier.